So you just generated the perfect AI image. Wow. And now you ask yourself, can someone else generate the exact same image? image as me. Are stable diffusion images unique? Let's find out. So if we look at these images, they are all unique in some kind of aspect. Yes, the general idea is the same, but the details, a bit of the positioning or composition, the colors, they differ a little bit. It just could be barely noticeable. But if you look at all of these and think that they are unique, then the answer is yes, stable diffusion always generates unique images, the end of the video. But if you're like me and you're not completely satisfied with that simple answer, let's dive deeper. To generate an AI image, you have to make some choices and all of these have a great effect on the final image. And that's not including the post-processing like upscaling, in-painting, out-painting, image to image, all of that good stuff. There are so many more options. Let's take a look at this list and figure out which variables matter the most so you you make sure you do make some choices on them in order to have the most unique images possible. Let's run some tests. For all the tests following, every setting and variable is the same except for the one that we are testing. And let's begin by looking at checkpoints. So for this one, I'm going to do prompt young female fire witch wearing a gold necklace, a medium shot, intricate metal, fire flames, best quality, masterpiece, highly detailed concept art, and some negatives. And I'm going to test eight different checkpoints. Here are the results. Based on these specific checkpoints, all of the returned images are unique. They did come from the same seed, and like I said, all the settings were the same. Although deliberate and chill out mix have similar composition, hair, top clothing, the two images still look very distinctive. You might get different results from testing models because they could have been trained on similar image data sets or they were merged together to create a new model. So my verdict is that it's eight out of 10 important importance because the same prompt with a different model will most likely create a completely unique image. But a different prompt on one model that was straight on a limited data set may produce similar results. Next up, let's test the importance of prompts. To test the prompt, we will look into removing and adding words using synonyms, emphasis, artists, and word order. Here is from left to right what I've changed. The first one is young female fire witch. That's the original prompt. Then we have female fire witch. We're removing the word young. This one is young female fire witch, magical, wearing a gold necklace. We're adding the word magical and seeing how that influences the final image. Youthful female fire witch wearing a gold necklace. So we're using a synonym, young, youthful. Young female fire sorceress, young female fire witch. And we're leaving an emphasis here of 1.2. And that does have a significant difference from the original. Art by Michelangelo. We're adding an art style. Wearing a gold necklace, young female fire witch. We're just changing the order. There are so many different modifiers you can use in your prompts. I've only tested one change at a time at the start of the prompt, but there are many other words inside that prompt and so many different possibilities for change. So while the final generated images look similar, I wanted to show you how big of an impact each word makes on a single image. So my my verdict is that it's 10 out of 10 important, so you always have to pay attention to your prompt, and if you can make it more detailed, then I don't see why not. Now let's test negative prompt. For example, 3D sculpture of an orc face, orc bust, best quality, masterpiece, 3D, blender render, 8K, ultra detailed, simple background. Here are the negative prompts that I've added left to right. So the first one is empty, there's no negative prompt. Then we have green, and as you can see, the color has toned down the saturation in the green. Now we have low res, that has an effect from the original image. We have realistic, so it kind of makes it a bit more cartoony. Then we have cartoony, and now we see someone with, I guess, more realistic proportions for an orc. Depth of field made a big difference as well. We have deformed. 
And then we have text, low res, cartoony, depth of field, deformed. We've combined a couple of them to get an even different image. If you look at all of them, you can tell that most of them could be a completely different sculpt. Or if you were sculpting, let's say, 10 different orcs for a video game, this would be 10 different orcs, I suppose. My verdict is 9 out of 10. You can judge for yourself which version you like the most, but the fact keeps a single word in the negative prompt will affect your generation. Let's test sampling steps. Oftentimes, people use between 20 and 50. So for for this one, I'm going to test from 10 to 80. As you can see from this image, the generations are kind of unique. The most visible difference is between values 10 and 70, I would say, with 70 to 80 being the least changes, at least in this specific checkpoint and prompt and seed, you know, all of it matters. But what remains unchanged is that the overall approximate positioning and color palette of the elements. So if we look at the moon, Moon on the 10 is blurry, Moon on the 80 is very defined and sharp and detailed, but they are still in the same position with similar coloring. Either way, sampling steps do have an effect on the overall image, but if everything else stays the same, the images are a bit too similar to be considered truly unique, so I give it a 4 out of 10, although for some models I've noticed the difference to be higher. Next up, let's test sampling methods. There are many sampling methods available for this test I only used 10 and I give it a verdict of 2 out of 10 because it does influence. You can see some samplers provide the same image but others make completely unique ones. Still I think most users use the most popular samples and so will you probably. So focusing on the sampler for image uniqueness is not going to cut it. Now let's test width and height. Changing the size from 512 by 512 to 576 by 576 keeps the same ratio, but the generated image will look completely different. Check it out. And so I give this verdict 10 out of 10 because changing width and or height parameters will greatly affect the final image. Something to keep in mind. Now let's test the CFG scale, which controls how strongly the image should follow the prompt. Oftentimes we go for anywhere around 7 for most of the popular prompts that I've seen online so far. And so I've tested it from 2 to 20. And as you can see, anything about 10 is starting to look a little bit less appealing, but more specific. So my verdict is 5 out of 10. In the smaller numbers, 1 to 10, CFG scale affects the final uniqueness of the AI image quite a lot. But anything above that, and users probably won't be using the numbers as much because of the impact it has on the final appeal of the artwork. All right, let's do high-res fix. So at first I'm doing no high-res fix. This is the original image. Now this is with it at 1.1. As you can see, there is already quite a bit of a difference then we have with it at two. And that's once again a different image, but with many more details included in it. Now we can look at the denoising strength because that's another option that you can play with. In the original, the denoising strength was six. Now, if we do it with four, that's a different image. If we do it with eight, that's an even more different image. We can also change the high res steps to a different number to get a different result as well. So if we do 10, that's the result and 50. That's a bit different, you know, when the original image, it was the same as the generation. And finally, we can change the height, for example, not by 1.1, but change it from 512 to 680 for height. And that gives us, again, a different image. There are also different upscalers, but I won't even be looking into that because as you can see from all these little tiny tweaks, you get a different image. So my verdict is 5 out of 10. When it comes to image uniqueness, this is not the most important variable, but when talking about image quality, it certainly is. Right, next up, let's test the seed. The seed number looks something like this. And so for this test, I changed one random number from the original seed to a different number. And it made a huge difference. So my verdict is 10 out of 10. I think that's not surprising. The seed strongly affects the look of your image. It should be at the top of your priority list. Now let's talk about clip skip. 
it's a very advanced feature. You must enable it in the settings if you want to use it. I give it an 8 out of 10 because it definitely affects the final composition and the look of the final AI generated image, but you might not be able to use it on all checkpoints or you might get a unique image at the expense of the visual appeal. Now my favorite, let's test extra networks. Extra networks like LoRa, Hyper Networks, Textual Inversion are often used to achieve a specific feature such as a style, pose, or a person's likeness. But what I'm curious about is, will it change the image enough to be unique without taking over my desired outcome? You know what I mean? The prompt is human body with a rabbit head. And now I'm going to use this mermaid Laura, okay, on this prompt, which has nothing to do with red hair, mermaid tails, dresses, or girls completely. So this is the original image that was generated. This one with the mermaid Laura at point one, point two, point three, point five, point six, point seven, and point nine. As you can see, all of them are so much different. Like, it's pretty crazy. And I'm glad that there's no mermaids floating around and the concept stays and it looks surprisingly good. And the images look unique, especially with the higher Laura values. So even if uh, somehow somebody wrote the exact same prompt as me for the original image, they would have never put a mermaid Laura at 0.9 and get that final piece that I got. You know what I mean? So I kind of like the result of the 0.3 Laura. So I will test it with some more unrelated Lauras. Now here's the original again. Here's the 0.3 with our mermaid Laura. And here is some more that I tested with other unrelated Lauras that have nothing to do with bunny heads or anything like it. Most of them followed the prompt precisely, except for the last two, which look like a girl, but that makes sense. A lot of AI generations do. So as you can clearly see, external networks can be used to create even more unique images while following your original concept. And you don't have to worry that the LoRa doesn't really apply to your prompt or to your desired outcome. You can just test it out because sometimes the results are surprising. And then I thought, what if instead of adding one LoRa at point three, you added two or three LoRas? And I think even more custom work would be generated. So who would have thought that adding Mermaid LoRa and there was one more would turn it into this? I didn't. And now I will always try some unrelated Loras on all of my works. So my verdict is 9 out of 10 because depending on the Laura you choose, and it doesn't have to be re relevant, like I already said, you might get slightly to extremely unique results. Adding more than one only enhances this effect. And what are the chances that all variables you use will be the same with the next person? Zero to none. Adding an unrelated Laura to the mix and your image will surely be unique. So Stable diffusion AI generated images are always unique, although some factors influence by how much. Based on the test above and my personal experience, here is how much each factor influences the uniqueness of your AI generated image. And this is just from personal ideas. You can have a completely different numbers there, but that's besides the point. You saw the tests and now you can decide for yourself which variables do you have to pay attention to all the time when you're generating. So I would say there's nothing to worry about. Even if you're taking somebody else's prompt or idea, just adjust these high effect variables and you'll be totally fine. Have fun generating. Hey, you're still watching? Then watch this one next. Cheers.